Uh, Paula Wilcox, who plays Shakespeare's <laughs> mum, is here. Oh, Hooray. lovely to see you. It is a really, uh, I mean, I've never seen quite such a, um, a hilarious take on yeah. Shakespeare before. What it's do you... a brilliant take on Shakespeare, and we've had so much of, of the plays. We've seen the plays during this celebration mm. of 400 years since his death. And it's just fantastic to be in the sitcom to mark the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. It's great. And it's funny, and it's and it and it's light. But as we were saying earlier, mm. um, it, it's a very lovely and painless entry point mm. into the works of Shakespeare, I think, because it covers his life, but it also covers the plays. Yeah. There's even one episode that covers the sonnets, which has got to be one of the one of the kind of densest yes. sort of literary experiences that you can have. And uh, and here we are making jokes about it. It's it's really I'm so proud of being yeah. in it. Yeah, that's quite an important thing to be part of as well, isn't it? Because Shakespeare is so, such an influence on the way we write, what we read, and sort of the literature that we study yes. at school as well. And this is, as you say, it sort of drags you into to his work yes. in, a, in a very different way. Yeah, so I remember my first visit to a Shakespeare play was um, as part of a school group mm. being taken to the theatre. And we'd, we'd looked at the, at the play and, mm. and we'd sort of struggled with some of the language. But then seeing the, the play on stage, it was Henry IV, Part One, and there are lots of scenes in the inn in Shakespeare, in Henry IV, Part One, where Prince Hal is down with the lads in the pub and living the life and, and having a lot of fun. And the, the actors who, who played it were so brilliant that they made us feel like, oh, well, we, we kind of know people like this. They're just <laughs> lads in the pub being silly. And, um, and I think that's a lot of what Upstart Crow is able to do because it shows you Shakespeare struggling with his work in London and the jealousy of, of Robert Greene, the critic, who called him Upstart Crow because they were, they were so jealous of this, this sort of grammar school upstart who was, who was really popular with the public. Um, and and uh, and back home, when he goes back home to visit his family, of course they're all like, oh, do you know, Dad, this is so boring, and and you know people don't really talk like this, do they? And his wife's just really interested in getting, you know, did you get paid? Have you got the housekeeping money? Because you know we need <laughs> we need another goat, really. And you're you not know. very nice to him either, your character. Well, I'm I'm all right with my son. I think I'm quite it's proud a, it's of a my wife, son. Isn't it? But I'm a little bit, um, well, I've totally been let down by my husband because John Shakespeare, actually in life, um, was, uh, was in terrible trouble and lost his position with the town council um, because he was accused of stealing um, sheepskins or, or selling them illegally. And so he lost his business and lost his fortune. And um, so Mary Arden felt that she, she'd come down in the world. And what I love about that is it's... it's and she's um, married beneath her. Yes, but so much of it is, is, as you say, is sort of based on factual, but just yeah. given this comedic edge, yeah. which is just brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's brilliantly put together. And that and actually did happen. He did get Anne Hathaway pregnant. Right. And they did have to marry, and he was only 17, and she was about 25. So, uh, you accurate. know, yeah. so Mama thought that he had married beneath him and, she, you know, just, you know, the sins of the of the mother. Some people, Paul, are likening it to, to Blackadder. Is that mm. is that a bad thing? Is that something to be celebrated? And, and can you see, I mean, Blackadder was hugely successful. Yeah. If it gets anywhere near the success of Blackadder, yeah. people will be talking about it for yeah. years. Well, I was a huge fan of Blackadder, so I don't see it as a, as a problem at all. Um, but I think it's, 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 um, it's different in as much as it really is about real things and mm. real people. And, uh, and I think that it's, it's terribly disciplined because, you know, it is all based around the plays and a lot of the stories that, that, we've, that Shakespeare and his, and his pals from London particularly fall into are mirrored in the plays of Shakespeare. I mean, the, the stories that happen to them then become uh, William Shakespeare's plays. And it's quite often Anne Hathaway, at the end of the day, who sees the promise in a story that he's yes. told her about something that happened during the day. And she can say to him, you know what, that would be really good in a play. <laughs> oh, um, I love, one of the brilliant things about it as well, and I've said that so many times, is that... Um, <laughs> she enjoyed um, it, by is the way. That, um, <laughs> is that, you know, you know, for example, the first one is about Romeo and Juliet. So we sort of, most of us will know what happened in Romeo and Juliet. So you sort of can almost guess it unfolding, and that actually works with the comedy as well, doesn't it? Yes, yes, it does. And um, I think that the, there are other plays that, I mean, there's one play where, as you know, every every time he 
travels up to Stratford, there's always a problem with the coach breaking down uh, because there are rut fillers filling ruts in the road. So the coach breaks down, a wheel comes off, and they have to spend the night in a hedge or something. So there's always a big saga, you know, about the, about the journey up north. And um, so, I'm sorry, I forgot the question. No, so we, know the, we sort of know the end of the stories, don't oh, we? Oh, yes. Or what and, so, and so there's one of these journeys where they're, it says um, they're, they're walking across a blasted heath because the, the coach has broken down and they come across three um, eccentric old ladies. <laughs> if you get offered a role in actual Shakespeare yeah. after this, yes. Yes. How, how, um, how will this experience sort of affect that? Yes, I might have killed that part of my career, Stone <laughs> Dead might and I. I think it'll have to be in comedy, won't it, in a comedy role? Oh, no, it won't be. What about Boomers as well, because that was very successful, wasn't yes, it? Yes, we've got our fingers crossed that we're going to do another series of that because it has been very popular. Um, and, yes, that, that never stops. And another lovely cast to work with. You sort of get the impression, don't you, about um, Upside Crow, that people really wanted to be involved. Was it the script that did it for you? Or it was, was the it? script. I think we all got together, of uh, the 10 of us or 11 of us, and we'd all read the scripts and we were all on board, 100%. Um, and we so wanted to be involved with it. And I have to say that uh, David Mitchell, it was like watching a masterclass in how to be a great leading actor, because mm. he had masses, masses to learn. And some of it is quite Shakespearean. Yeah. So he learned masses of stuff and he made it look so easy. And he was so mm. easygoing and lovely to be with all the time that um, it, was, it was completely pleasure. Sounds like you had great fun. <laughs> yeah, does it? Good. <laughs> are there, at the moment, are there really six was. or eight at the moment? There are six. Right, there's more plays. Yeah, there are plenty more plays. <laughs> oh, it can go on forever. Thank yes. you so much for coming in this Thank morning. You. All the Thanks best for the rest of it as well. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. Uh, you can watch everything.